Oh, hi again, everyone. Uh, in this session here, we're going to discuss something in general. Uh, I wanted to get your views about it. And this one thing we all love and in, indulge in it is called bodybuilding. And we wanted an open discussion and I wanted people to be totally honest about it. Uh, do you really like what bodybuilding is going through these days on the last bunch of years? Do you actually like today's bodybuilding? Because it doesn't resemble that anything I know. Uh, first of all, we, we, we do bodybuilding because it is something that we always wanted to do because it's related to your health and well-being. And when that health and well-being is being tossed out of the window, then it's no longer good for you. So this sporting activity or this physical activity we do that's called bodybuilding, of course, it's like I said before, it's not a sport. I come from Olympic weightlifting background and that's a sport, an Olympic sport. Bodybuilding is not a sport, it's an activity, very much like figure skate. But people who run figure skate internationally maybe had more political clout with the International Olympic Committee, so they joined in, or maybe more people like it, and then they like bodybuilding. Maybe bodybuilders look scary to people. I don't know. I can't put my finger on it, my finger on it. But what I'm really interested in talking about today, and to have an open discussion with all of you, and please take this discussion to everyone you know. Let them talk about it, give it to all the social media you want it, websites you want it, you have my permission. What really troubles me a lot is that the increased number of bodybuilding practitioners, people, bodybuilders, are getting sick and dying. Now, life and death is something we have no control of. Uh, we are given life from birth, uh, before birth. And death, like some people say, it, it's part of life. Actually, death is not part of life. Death is part of your overall existence. So we're not going to discuss that because this is beyond our point. But what I'm concerned about is that some bodybuilders, or a lot actually, <laughs> continue to cause themselves a great deal of harm, experimenting with different material, different stuff that are strange to the body uh, in order to gain what? Like to get big. Well, like some people said, how big is big? Well, how big do you want to be? And when you go to the competition, they don't really put you on a scale. There is no scale. I'm, I, perhaps I was the smallest person in, in competition, professional competition period. I mean, I always look like over 200 pounds on everybody. Nobody ever would ever guess how much I weigh. But the way I train, the biomechanics I follow, the physiology that I learned from weightlifting helped me to really cross over that and get over that and give people the impression that I was bigger. Uh, I never really, in some competitions, 155 pound body weight, 160 on a lucky day, but it's how my muscles actually were put together, how I trained. So if you can win like I did, big competitions with the least amount of energy and effort, then you're clever. But if you have to really destroy your life and destroy your health, destroy your social life, destroy your work, and lose a lot of friendships or things in, in the process to win a title in a competition and give you, okay, give you $100,000, 200, 300, four, maybe. This is basically breadcrumbs compared to what the organizers get, get from the competition. Your health, definitely, as far as I understand, a lot more worth than that. Even if you give you a million dollar and something wrong happened to your health, then you did something wrong. Then this bodybuilding, the way you did it, it's not good for you or not good for anyone. So when you get to see huge bodybuilding fellows, and I really feel, I'm not trying to be critical of them. I appreciate their effort. I know how hard they work. 
I can really relate to the hardship we all going through and the tough times in training and dieting and earning money. But when they walk on the stage unable to breathe properly, then there's something wrong. When they, when, it, when they cannot really go through an extended anaerobic endurance exercise uh, for a few minutes without really losing their breath, you know, it's a problem for them. So health is number one. Everyone knows that. And I don't know why a lot of people are obsessed with being big and they all look like they all train the same way with each other. Not a different training plan. Everyone has big the traps, big delts, and they all want to give you the most muscle. It's like the only pose exists in, in reality. There are other poses there that are a huge deal of big work. And all these things and, and the obsessions of bodybuilding and, and, and the pressures in it makes us all live in that little bubble that's called bodybuilding world. And we think this is the whole existence. And then I was lucky enough to really pull myself out of that early. And basically, as I did my competitions, I finished and that was it. That was it. Because coming from bodybuilding, outsider to, to I got coming from weightlifting, excuse me, to bodybuilding, I was able to see what was inside. Then I was careful enough to pull myself outside safely. But those who aren't trapped in it until today and continue to go for it and I don't know. I mean, I don't want to sound negative, but this is not bodybuilding. Uh, bodybuilding is all about health. It's all about well-being. It's not about really going into cycles of whatever and getting off this one and taper off with that one and all these names we hear about. And one big part that is not helping you with that or helping anyone, all the bodybuilding media, they're all hung up on promoting bigger guys and putting them on the cover, putting them on uh, writing articles, how do I did this? And it's no different than any that what anyone did many years back. The exercises are all the same. There are no new exercises in bodybuilding. I can tell you that. The only new exercises are the ones that I actually innovated and bring it through my programs and my upcoming books uh, for a lot of people. But other than that, there is no innovation. Uh, we haven't seen anyone in, in the history of bodybuilding who actually even at my time of competition, who understood physiology or biomechanics or how to really get someone set up in, uh, in a certain squatting position, for example, or arm curl position. Uh, they're all hung up on taking your pictures, especially in the area which was like a, a terrible dark era. All the magazine publishers and the writers and photographers, they figured that they were all untouchable. Coming to competition, taking my picture, his picture, that picture, selling it or doing whatever, writing articles which is falsified <laughs> untrue, claim it to people, and when you get to really see that, see it, they tell, oh, sorry, we didn't mean that, it was that, so can you make a correction? Oh, we promise, and then someone dies before makes a com correction, somebody runs away. So in the era of the 80s, I can tell you, my friends, there has been a great deal of deception, thievery, stealing your intellectual properties without your knowledge, without your putting exercises in my name that I've never really done and writing the different stuff how I trained. So a lot of these uh, uh, stuff were passed in history. Uh, this is part of the dark side of bodybuilding that you don't really make that good living that you want it. But we're all looking for the ultimate health. You have to, to stay healthy. You have to remain healthy. Uh, big in bodybuilding, it's, it's okay, it's good, but has to be within certain limits, within proportion. Uh, I understand not many people agree with what I'm talking about, but it's okay. It's a free world. It's a free discussion. You know, uh, anyone who likes my discussion is welcome. Anyone who doesn't like it is also welcome because uh, from my experience, I need to have uh, some eye openers for a lot of people today in, in bodybuilding and especially all these uh, big bodybuilders uh, who, who continue to really indulge in what they're doing and then they don't really last in the competition. And many of them who lack of understanding or have the biomechanics or how 
the anatomical or mechanical adaptations work in the body, they continue damaging their back, damaging their knees, having injuries, and then they end up out of the game, crippled, almost crippled at a young age. Uh, that, by comparison to those who pass away or die, that's considered lucky. But I wish them all the best. I wish them all safety. And I want to really share these thoughts with you today to really get uh, a, a feeling to what's bodybuilding all about. And if you're in a certain area, a town or a village or somewhere, uh, you try to change it. Talk about it. Speak to the media, bodybuilding media. Speak to the associations, you know. Tell them, you know, you should not be promoting that. But unfortunately, they all do because it's got to do with money. But uh, in here, in this platform, I am mainly concerned about the health of those who do bodybuilding, and I wish them all the best. I don't wish to see any harm on anyone, and I know how hard everyone train, whether they're 250 pounds or 150 pounds, doesn't matter. We all go through the same hell. We all went through hardship. And basically, if you get out of it healthy and safe, good for you. And with this, I want to end that discussion. Love to hear from you, uh, your comments. Uh, share it with all your friends. And uh, until next time, take care. All the best.